prominent ears or bad ears are a common problem and uh, many a times it leads to teasing or ridicule in the school age years. That is why many parents come to seek help from a plastic surgeon for the prominent ears of their kids. I am Dr. Shilpi Vidani. I am a plastic and aesthetic surgeon at SB Aesthetics Gurugram India. When we talk about prominent ears or commonly called as bad ears, basically it is a thing that one has uh, from birth and uh, it leads to the outward projection of the ears thereby making them look prominent and that is why the term prominent ears. Now um, when we look at the growth of the ear, uh, basically around 10 years or 11 years of age, almost the entire growth of the ear is complete and that is why if we want to treat prominent ears or bad ears, this is a good age where we can treat. When we talk about treatment for prominent ears, what do we actually do? Basically the cartilage is extra in the ear and that is what we remove in this surgery. It is a short surgery, does not take a lot of healing time and in this surgery we remove that prominent part of the cartilage from behind the ear and pin the ear back and that is why it is also called ear pinning procedure or otoplasty. Otoplasty is a technical term. Many parents and many young adults who are seeking this surgery, they are conversant with this, uh, with this terminology because they have researched enough when they come to us. Now when we talk about uh, otoplasty, so oto is ear, plasty is modification. So basically we are modifying the shape of the ear in this surgery. So uh, the approach to the surgery is basically from behind the ear, so the cuts are not visible. The scar line uh, very finely fits in the crease of the ear behind the ear. And uh, when we are doing the surgery, what we do is we, uh, we reflect the skin from the ear, from the back of the ear. We take off that piece of cartilage which is extra and then we stitch the cartilages together, we stitch the skin back and then we can have the pinning of the ear back. When we are considering surgery, definitely as surgeons, our preference is to operate uh, in the younger age group. Now why is it so? When we are considering cartilage uh, maturation, so in the younger age, the cartilage is really soft, it can take in the sutures nicely, it can get modified very well. In the younger adults or even in late adulthood, we can do this surgery. But what happens is that the cartilage becomes slightly stiff, more stiff than in the younger age. And then when we are taking the stitches through the cartilage, they may cut through. That leads to somewhat a recurrence of the prominent ear to some extent when we are doing it in adulthood. But yes, uh, of course, the, the preference is to operate the children in the young age so that they can have a permanent effect of this surgery. So when we are putting the stitches, these can be long term dissolving or rather permanent sutures which can be and which are very fine actually, you don't feel them and the skin covers it very well. There are a couple of modifications of the procedure, they can be you know the prominence of the ear bowl. So the, there's, a, uh, there's a cartilage bowl in the ear which we call as conca. So either that can be enlarged or it can be this angle that can be more prominent. There can be a helix which is more prominent. So obviously the ear has different parts and once you visit the surgeon, uh, he or she will be able to tell you what kind of procedure is most suitable for you or your kid if you are seeking the surgery for your kid. And uh, this surgery can be done under local anesthesia for young adults and adults. But in children, we definitely prefer IV sedation or we put them to sleep during the surgery so that the surgery can be carried out smoothly. Now, while I'm telling you about this, I would also like to point out uh, to something which is called a cauliflower ear. Now, it's an interesting terminology, but what happens in this? So, when there is ear trauma, what happens is that there is blood accumulation around the ear cartilage. Sometimes people think that, okay, there is no external injury, it's just a little swelling, so it will resolve on its own. But what happens is that that swelling gradually hardens and that leads to a permanent deformation of a perfectly fine ear. So obviously there has been some change that has taken place internally. So what happens is that the blood that accumulates inside of the skin in the ear without breakage of the skin because if the skin breaks the blood is going to come out. But if it remains inside what happens is that it organizes and then it forms a cartilage like structure which is a very very hard scar like structure and that refuses to resolve. That is called a cauliflower ear. It is common in people who are uh, involved in martial arts or boxing. So in those cases, the trauma to the ear many times is neglected. It leads to deformation of the ear. In that also, the cartilage can be shaved, the extra portion can be shaved 
and the ear can be reshaped. So since this surgery is not a very time taking surgery, we can also combine it with other procedures. For example, when we are doing nose surgery, we can combine the ear surgery with it or in fact even a chin surgery. When we are doing all the surgeries, other surgeries on the face, then we can combine the ear surgeries together with it. And you can have in the same healing time, you can take the benefit of two procedures. If you found this video useful, do like it and share it with your friends. On our YouTube channel, we keep posting information about plastic surgery, skin treatments, anti-aging, lot of interesting videos we put up. So do subscribe to our channel SB Aesthetics and keep the notification bell on so that you get notifications for the new videos.